Okay. So, are you ready to jump into Jujutsu Kaisen today? Always. I am too. <laughs> uh, because we're talking about Gojo Satoru. Okay. And specifically his powers, which, like, I was looking at the stuff you sent me, mm -hmm. and wow, it's even wilder than I thought. Yeah, his uh, his power really is something else. Yeah. It's interesting because when you really look at Gojo, it's not just about, like, raw physical strength. I... You know, he can, like, punch really hard and all that. But it goes beyond that. Yeah. It's really about manipulating the fabric of reality in the Jujutsu Kaisen world. So you're saying he can, like, bend the rules of their universe. Yeah, basically. And it all starts with his limitless technique. Okay. It lets him manipulate space at an atomic level. Hold on. At the atomic level. That's like controlling the smallest pieces of everything. Right. I'm imagining him, like, rearranging atoms, like Legos, to create uh -huh. what, anything. Yeah. You got it. And that's what makes him so powerful. This precise manipulation allows him to do some truly mind-blowing things. Yeah. A good example is Infinity, which is basically like an impenetrable barrier around Gojo. Oh, yeah. Infinity. I've heard about mm -hmm. that. That's how he's basically untouchable, right? Exactly. Nothing can really reach him because Infinity slows down anything approaching him like infinitely. Mm. The sources I sent over describe it as creating this a endless loop of space and anything trying to get through is just trapped. Ooh. Think of it like a raindrop. Okay. Just frozen in midair, never hitting the ground. Okay, that's a really cool visual. I get it. Yeah. But if infinity is always on, how can he even, like, interact with the world? Can he shake someone's hand? That's a great question. And it shows he's got serious control. Uh -huh. Because it seems like Gojo can turn infinity on and off whenever he needs to. Uh -huh. Like, it's not always running at full power. Okay. It really shows how much he's mastered his abilities. So it's not just raw power. It's right. precision control. Exactly. Mm. Okay, well, speaking of control, we got to talk about his blue and red techniques. Oh, yeah. These were mentioned a lot in what you sent me. Yes. They sound like he's taking his spatial manipulation to a whole other level. For sure. So with blue, he can create a sort of vacuum that pulls everything towards a central point. Like a black hole. But like way more stylish. Yeah, something like that. And then you have red, which does the complete opposite. It repels matter. Hmm. Pushes it away. So he's like pushing and pulling with invisible hands. Right. But these hands can crush mountains, probably. Pretty much. And the sources give some pretty crazy examples of how he uses these in fights. Oh, really? Like, one description that stood out was Gojo using blue to redirect a curse attack. Hmm. Basically turning his enemy's own power back on them. Whoa. That's next level. Yeah, he's a very strategic fighter. He's not just strong. He's using his opponent's power against them. It's oh, amazing. Exactly. Okay, but then there's hollow purple. Yes, hollow purple. Okay, from what I read, this is like the ultimate move for him. It is. It's a fusion of blue and red. Yeah, yeah, too. Imagine the forces of attraction and repulsion yeah. being so strong that they basically cancel each other out. Anything caught in the middle is completely annihilated. Wait, so it's not pushing or pulling. It's like erasing things from existence. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's scary, but also amazing. It's definitely his strongest technique. So we've talked about how Gojo needs a lot of control to use his powers. Yes. Do the sources say anything about how he got to that level? Because no. it seems like a lot to handle. It seems like it comes down to a few things. Natural talent, definitely rigorous training, and then there's the six eyes. Okay, the six eyes. Yeah, that gets mentioned a lot. Mm -hmm. But I never really got what it was, mm -hmm. you know? But the stuff you sent me makes it a lot clearer. Yeah, the six eyes are like super rare, even in the Gojo clan, which is known for having strong sorcerers. Right. Basically, it gives him this crazy perception of cursed energy. It's like he sees the world differently. So not x-ray vision, but cursed energy vision. Yeah, kind of. It gives him a massive edge in a fight. Yeah, it's like a cheat code. But it's more than just seeing it, you know? Mm -hmm. He can analyze it, understand how it flows in detail. Wow. Like he can see attacks coming, predict where they're going, even find weaknesses. That's insane. So he can mm -hmm. plan his moves perfectly. Yeah. And this all connects back to his control over Limitless. Oh, how? I thought they were separate things. The six eyes are key for using his Limitless techniques. Okay. It's like having a supercomputer in his head that tells him exactly how to use his energy. So not just power, but efficiency. Yes. He's not wasting energy. He's precise with every move. That makes sense why he's always so calm and fights. Right. 
I'd be freaking out going against someone who can do all that and never gets tired. It's definitely intimidating. We've talked about his power, but we can't forget he comes from a pretty important family. Right. The Gojo clan the, uh, were mentioned a lot in what you sent me. Yeah. For centuries, they've been known for producing some of the strongest sorcerers ever. Mm. They've had a huge role in protecting humanity from curses, maintaining balance, you know. Mm. Gojo, inheriting the limitless and the six eyes, he's like the peak of their bloodline. So he's not just trying to live up to his own expectations. Yeah. He's got his whole family history on his shoulders. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. Definitely. And does that explain why he's so, I don't know, confident, sometimes almost arrogant? Maybe he knows he's strong. And in a world where strength means survival. Right. It makes sense he'd be confident. Yeah, and he knows what's at stake if he doesn't live up to his potential. Right. Okay, I see that. But what about him as a teacher? Ah. You know, these sources talk about him teaching. How does someone with his power and background approach that? It's really interesting, actually. You'd think he'd be distant, but he's super invested in his students. Really? He's not just teaching them moves, he's pushing them to be strong in every way. So he's making them work for it, not just giving them cheat codes. Exactly. He gets that real strength comes from facing challenges, overcoming stuff, learning from mistakes. Right. He pushes them hard sometimes, uses dangerous training methods. Well, yeah, in their world, it makes sense the stakes are high. For sure. Do you think he sees them as the next generation of protectors? Yeah. I mean, maybe he knows he can't always be there, so he's training them to take over someday? I think so. He believes in nurturing the next generation. Hmm. That's pretty selfless, especially for someone so powerful it he gets that strength isn't just about you it's about building something that lasts yes yeah. a legacy right and this brings up something people don't talk about much gojo knows he's not immortal oh wow yeah that's, that's heavy yeah even for gojo to know you're the strongest but it won't last forever it's got to be tough it is but one source said he knows time is fleeting things change Right. He doesn't dwell on it, but it pushes him to train the next generation. Makes sense if you're holding back the darkness, but only for so long. Yeah. You'd want someone else ready to take over. It's a heavy burden. Yeah. But he's not just fighting for himself. No. It's for the future, for humanity to be able to protect itself. He wants them to be strong even without him. Exactly. And that leads to a big question. What kind of legacy is he building? Hmm. How will his students shape the jiu-jitsu world? Yeah, that's a good point. If he's the peak of power now, what about those who come after him? Do they follow his path or make their own? This is what makes this deep dive so interesting. We've gone from the basics of his powers to these big ideas about the future of their whole world. For sure. It's been wild. But before we wrap up, I got to ask about his weaknesses. Mm. Every hero has some right. Of course, even Gojo's got limitations. Oh, really? <sighs> what could possibly stop the strongest sorcerer in the world? Well, even with... Almost unlimited cursed energy. He can't just use his strongest techniques forever. Mm. The sources say hollow purple especially takes a lot out of him. Okay, so even he needs to recharge makes sense. And his six eyes, as amazing as they are, they could be a weakness too. How? If something messes with his vision or perception. Oh, I get it, like jamming a radar. Exactly. And maybe the most interesting weakness is his personality. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you mean? His confidence, sometimes his arrogance could make him underestimate an opponent. Hmm. Classic hero flaw. Right. Pride could be his downfall. Yeah. So even with all that power, his biggest fight might be with himself. It's possible. And this ties back to what we talked about before, legacy and how power shifts. Right. Even the strongest can fall. And often it's because of their own struggle. True. It's not <laughs> just about power. It's about knowing your limits and overcoming them. Mm -hmm. Man, we've covered so much. And it feels like there's still more to uncover about Gojo and how he affects the jujitsu world. We've only scratched the surface, but what we've learned shows he's complicated and powerful. Totally. But before we move on, what stood out to you most about Gojo? You know, it's that thing about him being so confident on the outside, but knowing deep down he's got limits too. Yeah. It makes him more than just like a typical strong guy. He's dealing with serious stuff. Right. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, even for Gojo. Definitely. It makes you wonder what success even means to him, you know? Yeah. Like, is it just about winning every fight? Or is there something more he wants to achieve? Maybe it's about creating a world where he's not even needed anymore, mm. where his students are strong enough to handle things on their own. That goes back to legacy, right? What yeah. does he want to leave behind? Yeah. A world where his students are even stronger than him. It's a powerful idea. You know, shifting the whole balance of power. 
Yeah, not just one super strong guy protecting everyone, but a whole group working together. It makes his role as a teacher so important then. Right, he's shaping the future of jiu-jitsu society. That's a big deal. And it makes those weaknesses we talked about even more interesting. Yeah, like what if someone stops him from training the next generation? Or what if his own pride gets in the way? That's crazy to think about, even with all the powers and curses in Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah. The real story is about the choices people make. Mm-hmm. It's about being human. That's why Gojo is so interesting to me. Yeah, he's powerful, but he knows he won't live forever. Right. He's confident, but he's got a huge responsibility. Yeah. Right, and he's trying to teach others to be better than him. It's all these contradictions. This deep dive has been amazing. We've gone from the science of his powers to these big ideas about his legacy and what it all means. I agree. I feel like I really understand him now. It's been great going through all this with you. You yeah. know, it's always cool to look at these superpowered characters and see how human they are underneath. So for everyone listening, we hope this has given you some new things to think about when it comes to Gojo and the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. We've just scratched the surface here. Right. There's so much more to explore. The best stories make us think and question things and look at the world differently. Yeah, so keep digging, keep asking questions, and until next time, stay curious, everyone.